Good morning. <coughs> In this video, I'm going to talk about a Mathematica notebook that I wrote. Uh, it's very simple, basically. Um, what we want to do is do something like this. We're going to predict the presence of breast cancer um, given a bunch of data on a patient. What is the likely chance that they have breast cancer? And um, the information is based on numerical scores of lab results. Uh, I've long forgotten like what the each number means. I just know that each number has to involve a numeric uh, result <coughs> that is related to breast cancer and what this um, program is it were um, in Mathematica. The goal is to uh, figure out which of those numeric um, results are relevant to the presence of breast cancer and which of those scores are less relevant to the presence of breast cancer. So um, here we go. Most of this is in real time. <coughs> I've calculated it before, but I've hidden it on purpose. So um, now I'm going to open my open office Excel uh, copy with this. Uh, so this, I haven't run it yet. Um, this system open is going to open um, in Excel uh, the spreadsheet that this is all based on. So now I just ran it. And it should be opening um, Excel. Here we go. Um, let me start recovery. I don't know what that means. Okay. Okay, the first column tells you whether or not the person has breast cancer, and zero means they do not have breast cancer, and a one means that they do have breast cancer. There's, these are not sorted at all uh, in any way, so it, I mean I'm sure it's sorted by something, but it's not sorted by any of these uh, criteria. So, uh, you can see these, so for patient number one here, um, their numeric results on their labs were given by B through F, and you can see what they are, and like for F, like 0 0.1, 0 0.08 are actually pretty close, and 0 0.1, 0 0.14, so these are all close together, okay? And then when you hit um, one, it's basically the same stuff. So it seems like column F is not going to be really involved that much. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, now you can do the same analysis for the rest and kind of figure it out. But if you scroll down, there are um, really not that many patients involved. Um, I think uh, we'll find out. I'll tell you. But. Um, so this is how the Excel spreadsheet is set up. The first column is classifier, um, zero if, if, if off and one if on. So we've got some ons here and a couple ons sporadically spread out. So let's go back to Mathematica. Um, that was just the first command. Now we're going to import the, that uh, as data, okay? And then G is going to basically be that matrix in Mathematica. So we're going to do everything with all based on what G is. So here we're going to uh, run this in a second. Um, N is going to be the number of patients. Okay. The number of rows in G. And then M is the number of columns in G. And N times N is the number of entries in the matrix. So this green, this yellow band here means that it's running. You can also see up here says running now it's not running so um, there are merely 3414 entries in the matrix representing all the data so here's a here's a side note um, the classify function within Mathematica so what it does is where the goal is classify uh, exactly what we're trying to do so the training set this is kind of like machine learning I guess and so one arrow A means that one is assigned to 
a the 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 script letter a um, what do they call that um yeah um two goes to a three point five goes to b and four goes to b so uh, that input gives you a V, okay? Now if you switch the input, then that gives you a W. So let's execute that to make sure that it's stored in the training set. So there it is, that didn't take long. Now C is going to classify a training set. This is taking a while because who knows why actually there's only two inputs <laughs> um so there's your classifier function which we're going to be using later so what do you think that would that this would be sent to if i went to b b a b so they're mostly b's okay let's see what that goes to w okay i guess that makes sense and um, here we can obtain a classifier probability for that example so it's V with a very low probability and W with a very high probability, 0.9918. Um, so this is where the fun begins. Um, we're actually going to do something like that except with the breast cancer data. And we're going to execute that. I, I would think that would take a while, but I'm not sure. Uh, it's just, that's just, that's, I'm sorry, that's just the, um, Set two is the table. Um, let me put it in matrix form. Set two. Okay, that may be a little bit better. Um, so this is actually from the uh, Excel spreadsheet. So if you recall, um, seventeen point nine. So we're talking about patient A here. Ten point three eight. 122.8, 1001, and 0. 0.1184. So it's, it's here. Um, and what can we do with it? Um, let's hide that. Let's classify. Um, and then I time, I'm going to time how long it takes to do it. Okay, <laughs> it says that it took one one millionth of a second to do it. I don't think so. It took more like 10 seconds. So let's just check. It said two uh, at the coordinate one, two, that means patient, this is patient number, and this is score or result number. Based on that, um, they're predicted. Um, cancer is zero, but their cancer actually was zero, so I mean it, they did not have cancer, and this was the, the prediction would have been zero. So here's the agreement table. How often does the prediction, which is C of something, is a prediction? How often does that equal the actual data? So here's the agreement table in matrix form. Takes a while because it has to actually do the classifying now. So it's true if the prediction actually what came true of them having breast cancer. And then it's false in some cases where um, the prediction said there was um, breast cancer and there wasn't. Or it said there wasn't breast cancer and there was cancer. So those are, those are, the, those are two, two ways it could be false. Um, but it's usually true. So let's see how often it was true. So I'll hide that so I don't have to scroll forever. And then tally, well, I'll run tally on that. So it was true 530 times. So out of uh, out of how many patients were there? 569 patients. Out of 569 patients, the prediction was true 530 times, and that amounts to um, it being correct 93% of the time. So that's the prediction, and it took like 10 minutes to really get through this, and. Uh, yeah, it's interesting, isn't it?